Hello everybody, I'm Miss Jessica from EVPL McCullough and today we're continuing our chapter book story time, our variety pack where we're doing a little bit out of a variety of books. Last time we were together, we did our Plinko board and it landed on Miss Jessica's choice. So I decided to get a book that has been on my to read pile for years. So um, it's a book that I've heard lots and lots of people talk about. I have heard lots of parents asking about it, teachers, and even kids coming in asking for it. So we are going to be doing Because of Mr. Terrupt by Rob Bouye. And this is actually part of a series of, book, of books that he has done. And we do have this available not only as a print copy, we have it as an e-audiobook and an e-book just in case you want to listen to it, which is still reading. Or if you would like to read it as a digital copy, then we do have those options for you. Okay, so this is a realistic fiction book, which means that it is based in reality. And this author was actually a teacher for a while. So he kind of based a lot of the characters on students that he had in his own class. So we are going to be reading real quick the inside cover just to see what the book is about because the back cover really doesn't give us a lot. Okay, it's the start of fifth grade for seven kids at Snow Hill School. There's Jessica. Hey, that's my name. The new girl, smart and perceptive, who's having a hard time fitting in, Alexia, a bully, your friend, one second, your enemy, the next, Peter, class prankster and troublemaker, Luke, the brain, Danielle, who's never stands up for herself, and shy Anna, whose home situation makes her an outcast, and Jeffrey, who hates school. Only Mr. Terrupt, their new and energetic teacher, seems to know how to deal with them all. He makes the classroom a fun place, even if he doesn't let them get away with much. Until the snowy winter day when an accident changes everything. And everyone. Now, one thing I do like about this book is that it goes to every single person's perspective. So each chapter is... Well, I should start with each section is a month. And then there are chapters and they're very, very short and they're just each kid's perspective as to what's going on that day. And then we get to the next month. So it's a very, very quick read, but also has a lot of variety in it, which I really, really like that it's not just one narrator, we get a lot of different perspectives. Okay, so we're going to read September. Peter. It's our bad luck to have teachers in this world. But since we're stuck with them, the best we can do is hope to get a brand new one instead of a mean old fart. New teachers don't know the rules so you can get away with things the old timers would squash you for. That was my theory. So I was feeling pretty excited to start fifth grade since I was getting a rookie teacher. A guy named Mr. Terrupt right away. I put him to the test. If the bathroom pass is free, all you have to or if the bathroom pass is free, all you have to do is take it and go. This year the bathrooms were right across the hall. It's always been an easy way to get out of doing work. I can be really sneaky like that. I take the pass all the time and the teachers never notice. And like I said, Mr. Terrapt was a rookie, so I knew he wasn't going to catch me. Once you're in the bathroom, it's mess around time. All the other teachers on our floor were women, so you didn't have to worry about them barging in on you. Grab the bars to the stalls and swing. Try to touch your feet to the ceiling, swing hard. If someone's in the stall, it's really funny to swing and kick his door in, especially if he's a younger kid. If you scare him bad enough, he might pee on himself a little. That's funny. Or if your buddy's using the urinal, you can push him from behind and flush it at the same time. Then he might get a little wet. That's pretty funny too. Some kids like to plug the toilets with big wads of toilet paper, but I don't suggest you try doing that. You can get in big trouble. My older brother told me his friend got caught and he had to scrub the toilets with a toothbrush. He said the principal made him brush his teeth with that toothbrush afterwards. Mrs. Williams is pretty tough, but I don't think she'd give out that kind of punishment. 
I don't want to find out either. When I came back into the classroom after my fourth or fifth trip, Mr. Terrip looked at me and said, boy, Peter, I'm going to have to call you Mr. Peabody. Or better yet, Peter the Peer, you do more peeing than a dog walking by a mile of fire hydrant. Everybody laughed. I was wrong. He had noticed. I sat down, then Mr. Terp came over and whispered in my ear, my grandpa used to tell me to tie a knot in it. I didn't know what to do. My eyes got real big when he said that I couldn't believe it. But that didn't matter. Mr. Terps just went back to the front board and the math problem he was going over. I sat there with my eyes big. Soon, a smile too. What did he say, Marty asked. Marty's desk was right next to mine. Nothing, I said. Ben and Wendy leaned across their desks to hear. They sat right across from us. Our four desks made up table number three. Mr. Terrapt called us by up by table sometimes. Nothing, I said again. It would be my secret. How cool was Mr. Terrapt? His reaction was better than being yelled at like the old farts would have done. Some kids in my class would have cried, but not me. And somehow, I think Mr. Terrapt knew I wouldn't. It was his way of letting me know that he knew that I, what was going on without making a huge stink about it. I liked that guy, Mr. Terrapt. He sure could be funny, and I'm a funny guy. This year, for the first time in my life, I started thinking school could be fun. Jessica. Act one, scene one. The first day of school, I was nervous, somewhat. The sweaty palms and dry mouth syndrome stuck. That wasn't surprising after all. I was coming to a brand new place. My mom and I had just moved all the way from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean over here in Connecticut. So it was my first day, first day in Snow Hill School. My mom came to help me get settled. We walked through the glass doors and beautiful entryway and stopped into the main office to ask for directions. A red-haired woman who proved to be exceptional at multi multitasking greeted us with a smile and a slight nod. She did this while the phone rested between her ear and shoulder, allowing her hands to scribble notes from a conversation she was having with her free ear with the brown-haired lady standing next to her. We waited, my fingers dug into the hard cover of my book. Hi, I'm Mrs. Williams, the principal. This was the brown-haired lady speaking. She looked serious, all decked out in her business suit. Welcome to Snow Hill School. Can I help you with anything? We're looking for Mr. Terrapt's room, Miss Mom said. I'm Julie Reitman and this is my daughter, Jessica. We're new in town. Ah, uh, yes, it's a pleasure to meet you both. Let me show you the way. Mrs. Williams led us out of the office. I glanced at the secretary one more time. She'd be a great character in one of my dad's plays, I thought. My dad directs small plays in California, where I still wanted to be. How are you today, Jessica? Mrs. Williams asked. Fine, I said, although that wasn't really true. We followed Mrs. Williams across the lobby and upstairs in search of my new fifth grade classroom. The hall smelled stuffy but clean, like they'd just been disinfected. I wondered if the custodians had done that on purpose to make a show of how clean their school was. I followed mom down the blue speckled carpet and past the rows of red lockers where some kids were already unloading new supplies. I could feel all their eyes studying the new girl in town. After the stairs came the whispers, my face burned. Here you are, Mrs. Williams said, this is your floor. There are four classrooms up here, all fifth grade, two on each side of the hall with the bathrooms right in the middle. Mrs. Williams pointed as she spoke. That's your classroom, she pointed again, room 202. Have a good first day. Thank you, Mom, said. I just nodded. Act one, scene two. We walked into the classroom. The teacher looked up from his desk and smiled at us. The butterflies in my stomach fluttered as if I were on a tilt-a-whirl. Good morning, I'm Mr. Terrupt, the teacher said as Mom and I walked in. He came right over to greet us. Good morning, Mom said. I'm Julie Reitman, and this is Jessica. I think she's a little nervous being a new kid. My tongue felt so swollen that I couldn't talk. I settled on returning Mr. Tarp's smile. It was a friendly one. Well, this is my first day too, so I guess we'll try to figure things out together, he said. My smile grew. Your seat is right over there at table two. You're with Natalie, Tommy, and Ryan. Being near the windows should give you some good reading light. That's a great book you have there, Jessica. 
I looked down at my book, A Wrinkle in Time. I rubbed my hand over the cover. cover. I really like happy endings, I said. Me too, said Mr. Tarrapt. I'll do my best to give you a happy ending this year. I smiled again. I couldn't believe it. My teacher was new too, and he liked what I was reading. I don't know why, but I sup, but somehow he made my butterflies disappear and my tongue shrink. Things were going to be okay. Luke. I like school. I'm good at it. I get all A's. So when Mr. Terrapt announced, announced our first math project, I was excited. Dollar words was crazy. Definitely not a worksheet problem like all the others I've ever been given. Not even close. We had to assume that the letter A was worth one cent, B two cents, th C three cents. The challenge was to find words that equaled one dollar when you add up their letter values. Not 99 cents or a dollar and one cent, but one dollar exactly. Mr. Terrapt gave us time to get started. He wanted to make sure we understood the project and he said he wondered who would be the first one to find a dollar word. I immediately made a data table of all the letters and their corresponding values, a quick reference for me. Then I started putting down any word that came to mind that had some of the bigger letters in it. Pretty equals 104. Walnut equals 91. Mister equals 84. Then I thought, hey, wait a minute. What if I just tack on the letter S? Misters equals 103. Hmm, no good, but very close. I figured this could be a worthwhile strategy for other words. So there I was cranking out words, trying to find the first dollar word of the year. So when, what do I hear? Peter and Alexia. This is the fourth year Peter's been in my class and my third time with Alexia. Peter's funny, but sometimes he gets to be too much. If I'm concentrating on my work and he just wants to joke around, it annoys me, but I like him. He's fun and he's no stranger to trouble. Alexia, on the other hand, is always involved in some girl war. That stuff I don't get. She loves to wear flashy clothes, dresses, skirts, fancy shoes, and she always has the accessories to go with them. And she says the word like way too much. Alexia isn't a stranger to trouble either. She and Peter are a good match. Peter elbowed Alexia. Then I heard him whisper a word to her. That's not even close to a dollar, I thought. 53, Alexia said, no good. Try. Were they crazy? They were trying out rude words and giggling the whole time. I just knew they were going to get caught. That's no good either, Peter said. Maybe. What a butthead. As soon as I thought it, I knew it was a worth word worth calculating. Sure enough, butthead equals 81. I tacked on the S. There wasn't just one butthead, but two buttheads. Dollar word. I was just about to call out that I had found out when Peter beat me to it. I've got a word, he yelled, buttocks. He started to the board like he was the coolest things in sliced bread and wrote it for the class. B-U-T-T-O-C-K-S, he said again, buttocks. Peter went on to demonstrate how the word added up to a dollar. Mr. Tarrapt didn't interrupt just as I thought, uh, just as I was about to, the new girl did. Buttocks is spelled with a K, or excuse me, he forgot the K earlier. I didn't catch that. Buttocks is spelled with a K in it, Peter, Jessica said. Peter looked to Mr. Tarrup. Sorry, Peter, she's right. Better try again. And maybe you should choose a different type of word than the ones you've been coming up with. Peter slunk back to his seat. No surprise to me. Mr. Tarrup knew what Peter was up to the whole time. I raised my hand. Mr. Tarrup, I've got one. I walked up to the board and wrote butthead. That was followed by a chorus of laughs. Butthead, I said. B-U-T-T-H-E-A-D adds up to 81 cents, but if we add more than just one, then we get buttheads, and buttheads is a dollar word. Just ask Peter and Alexia. Mr. Tarrup snickered. That's enough, Luke. I must say this isn't a word I was expecting, but nonetheless, it is our first dollar word. Congratulations. Dollar words was the best math project ever. We started it on a Wednesday, dollar word, and worked for three weeks through trial and error and a few strategies I learned along the way and some helpful hints from Mr. Tarrapt. I broke the record for most dollar words. My final poster was covered with 54 of them. Mr. Tarrapt looked at my work and smiled. Luke, this is excellent dollar word. You are the dollar word champ. Alexia. I was like, I have this new guy for a teacher. That's so cool. Mr. Terrapt was nice. He let us sit in tables, not rows. I was 
like, no way. Are you serious? And like the best was I got to sit with my friend Danielle. There was this new girl in our class, Jessica. She wasn't at our table, but I needed to talk to her. I needed to tell her who she could be friends with. She seemed like she could be pretty cool, even though she carried a book around like a teddy bear. I found her at recess. Outdoor recess is held behind the school. There's a big whack top area with basketball hoops and hopscotch. There's playground equipment and another spot and a large field for running around and playing sports like kickball or football. There's, that's where the gazebo is too, by the edge of the field. I found Jessica sitting alone on the steps of the gazebo. She was reading a book. I was like, what a loser. But I went up to her. Hey, I said, hi, she said back. You're Jessica, right? Yes. I blew a bubble with my gum and sat down. I'm Alexia, I said. My friends call me Lexi. I found the compact mirror in my purse and checked my rock star purple lip gloss. Then I was like, where'd you come from? We moved from California, the new girl said. I used to live in California too. I started playing with the stones that lay under my feet. It's always been easier for me to lie when I don't have to look at the person's eyes. We moved because like my dad got sick and needed the doctors here. I'm sorry, Jessica said. She started playing with the stones now too. Listen, I said, like you're new here, so let me help you out a little. Uh, if you want, that is. I snapped my gum. Sure, okay. I stopped playing with the stones and scooted closer to her. Want a piece of gum? No, thanks, she said. Of course not, little Miss Perfect. I put the gum back in my purse. That girl, I said, pointing to Danielle across the playground, you can't miss. She's the fat one. I laughed, but Jessica didn't. That's Danielle, watch out for her. She's like somebody you don't want to be friends with. But don't you sit with her in class? I thought you were friends. I wasn't expecting this. Usually girls just listen and follow along. I blew a bubble and snapped my gum again. Yeah, she used to be cool, but like she's been saying stuff about you, calling you Miss Goody Two Shoes and a snotty bookworm. Jessica seemed surprised. Oh, okay, thanks for letting me know, she said. Don't worry, I put my arm around her, stick with me and I'll like help you out. It'll be great. Then recess ended. That's how I got the girl war, girl war started. Jeffrey, the kids in class are all right. I have to deal with Alexia again, plus her, fo her feather boas and leopard print clothes and her stupid purse. I wonder what kind of makeup she puts on this year. She's so dumb. She thinks she's a Hollywood star or something. Then there's Luke. I don't mind him. He's just smart and serious about school. And Danielle, she's in my class. She's fat. And then there's Peter, a wise guy, a total smart aleck. I wanted to tell Mr. Terrapton that Peter spent all his time in the bathroom because he was messing around, but Mr. Terrap figured it out, even if he was new. He seemed smart. I just don't want him trying to figure me out. I'm no good in school. School sucks. Next chapter, Danielle. School was so great. My teacher seems pretty nice and he could be funny too, but none of that matters when you don't have friends. Lexi had done this stuff to me before. One day she's my friend, the next she's not. I don't even know why, I'm not mean to her. This year was the worst though. Things started out fine. Then one day after recess, Lexi started ignoring me, pretending I wasn't there. She would talk about things right in front of me and leave me out of the conversation. She started telling her stupid fat jokes. It was horrible, I cried at home a lot. I'm a little heavy, well, bigger I guess. I don't like saying I'm fat. I don't know why I am. I watch what I eat. I don't have any more than the other girls at lunch. Mom says I'll grow into my body. She's not fat either. Neither is my brother Charlie or grandma or grandpa or dad. Grandma says you've got to have some meat on your bones girl. Yeah grandma I think so someone like Lexi can tell fat jokes about me. I don't say anything though. Grandma doesn't get it. Only mom understands and I feel a little better when she reassures me that I'll thin out as I grow. She also tells me that there must be a reason I'm having to deal with this. It's making you a better person, she says, and someday this experience will help you. 
that's all great, but I wish I could grow into my body now. We live on a farm. My mom grew up here. My grandma and grandpa live in their own house next to ours. They help us run the farm. So my grandma's around a lot and she wanted to know what was wrong with me, why I was crying. Anytime I mentioned Lexi, she got all mad. I'm going into that school and fix that girl, she'd say. No, grandma. Why are you even still friends with her? She doesn't know how to treat people well, especially a friend. It's not her fault, Grandma. It's this new girl's fault, I said, sticking up for Lexi the way I always do. A new girl that I can't stand. If you keep telling yourself that, it won't ever get better, Grandma said. She's a tough woman. The only time I've got friends is when I'm in Lexi's group. Nobody wants to be friends with the fat kid. I don't know what to do. Grandma said a prayer with me that night. We knelt by my bed. Dear God, please give Danielle the strength to stand up to those mean girls in school or do what you can to teach Alexia a lesson. If you made her fat, that would be all right by me. I elbowed Grandma. Oh, okay, she said. I just ask that you provide Danielle with some comfort and direction during these tough times. We prayed for the good weather to hold up and for the farm. Amen. Anna. I didn't say much in school and I never raised my hand. That would have been an easy way for people to notice me and I didn't want to be noticed. People can be real mean. That's something mom warned me about and my mom knows, trusts me. I didn't have any close friends and I wasn't looking for any. Mom was my best friend. Not getting noticed was never a problem for me before. I was always quiet and well behaved so the teachers left me alone. I kept my head down and looked at the floor a lot, but I'm a good observer. Mrs. Williams, our principal, winks whenever there's some big surprise coming. It's something I noticed a few years ago. If you keep quiet, you have time to look and listen and take things in. At the beginning of the year, the first thing you pay attention to is the classroom. We had a nice room, a big one. There's a whole wall of windows opposite the door. Mr. Terrup's desk was in the corner by those windows. The students' desks were arranged in five tables of four. So right away, I knew we had a teacher who was into teamwork and who probably didn't mind a little talking. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been in old-fashioned rows. The front of the room had the blackboard and the back wall was a whiteboard. The last side of the room had all of our cabinets and a sink plus a drinking fountain. Most of the room was carpeted except for the side by the sink and fountain. Our door was next to the fountain. The other thing, the bigger thing you pay attention to in the beginning is your teacher, especially if he's new like Mr. Tarrant. Right away, I could tell that he was a reader because there were books everywhere in our room. Mom liked that when I told her. Mom's a library assistant in another school. It's a good job. She has the same schedule I do and it allows her to take some classes at night. She's studying art, something she missed out on when she was younger. She's really good at drawing and painting. Mr. Terrapt was young and athletic looking. He didn't have any pictures around his desk and he didn't wear a wedding ring. Miss Newberry from across the hall didn't have a wedding ring either. Neither did mom. Mr. Terrapt turned out to be different. He noticed me on my first day. It didn't matter that I wasn't raising my hand because he would say, Anna, get ready. I'm calling on you next. Or if we were talking about something and there wasn't just one opinion, he would say, Anna, what do you think? He wasn't going to let me hide all year. This made me nervous, but it turned out to be a good thing in the end. Okay, the next section is October, the next month. So we're going to stop there and I don't know about you guys, but I'm very excited to keep reading this book because I want to know what happens. There's some kind of accident that changes everything for everyone. So with all these different personalities, I want to know what each person is about, how they're going to change, or if they're going to stay the same during the school year. So pretty interesting book. Well, if you are interested in continuing this story, don't forget you can get a print copy or you can get a digital copy, or you can also get an e-audiobook so that you can listen to it, which is still reading. All right, so we're gonna pause for just a moment so that we can get our Plinko board and find out what we're reading next time. So I'll see you in just a moment. Thank you so much for joining us for our chapter book story time. All right, so now it's time to find out what we're going to be reading next time. So we have our categories fantasy, humor, historical fiction, science fiction, Miss Jessica's Choice, which we just did, 
adventure, realistic fiction, mystery, and spooky. Now, if I happen to land on something that we've done recently, I will probably choose something else just because that's the whole point of this is to get a variety. Okay, I'm gonna try to start over here. I could tell that one was gonna fall off. Ooh, adventure, we haven't had adventure yet. Okay, so I'm very excited because I definitely have a couple of books in mind that I would love to read. So hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget to go to evpl.org to check out and see all of our resources, whether it is blogs that have fun activities for you to do or other videos that you can tune into to watch. Follow us on social media and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.